Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with the uh, with the ZX9R. Now, as you can see, here we've got a bare frame, bare with the exception of a couple of little bits that we're going to remove. There's one little bracket here, which um, I think that held the starter solenoid or a relay or something, I can't remember off the top of my head uh, without going back through the footage. Uh, but obviously that's going to come off, that's just held in with a 10mm bolt. Before we get it powder coated and obviously um, blasted to remove all the old paint, uh, what I want to do is all these all the riv nuts that are all over the frame uh, up here. I'm going to draw all those out. They're all going to be removed and replaced with brand spanking new ones. Um, additionally, I need to remove the outer races from the head bearings. Um, they're still in there. And the other thing, and the thing that I'm going to do first is um, I'm going to remove the VIN plate. Uh, again, that's just held in with a couple of pop rivets. Just drill the heads off and then that'll come off because it's not actually uh, bonded on. You can actually lift the edge if you get your finger if, you know a, a fingernail under you anyway that's what we're going to be doing in here and if we've got the time i'm also going to pull the forks apart so let's get stuck into it <laughs> Okay, I've uh, removed the bracket. That will then um, get cleaned and replated at some point along with its bolt. So I'll pop that to one side and uh, sort that out later on. Right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at this VIN plate. Now I've got a sharp drill uh, and all I'm gonna do is simply drill the heads off of these rivets. It's made the, it's not actually taken the head off yet. It's, it's made the head, it's made the rivet loose. So I reckon with a little chisel and just tap the head off and then and then that'll be removed. Obviously I've just got to be careful that I don't damage the plate because obviously then it'll just look scruffy when it comes to reinstalling it. So I'll go give a chisel and we'll give it a little tap off. That. Same for this side. And there we go. That is the ring plate removed. I'll get the rest of that rivet off there later. But as you can see, we haven't damaged it in any way. And uh, yeah, with, with two new rivets on. It will go on there perfectly fine. And uh, so yeah, I need to keep that safe because I don't want to lose it. So again, that'll go into a little box. Right, I think what we'll do next is we'll um, we'll remove, uh, we'll start removing the riv nuts. Obviously what I'll do, I'll do one of them uh, just to show you what it is I'm actually going to do. And then once I've done one, I'll whip through the rest uh, and then we'll uh, I'll bring it back in when we uh, get around to doing the bearing. So what I'll do, I'll move the, uh, I'll move the frame into the position I want it, get the right drill bit, and then we'll uh, we'll start drilling one out. Right, there's, there's quite a few of these uh, riv nuts. There's a couple here for the rectifier, the, the seat lock assembly, all that sort of stuff. There's a couple more here, and then there's two at the front with the tank. So there's a uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve in total. Um, so I need to remove all twelve. Um, they're all the same size anyway, so it, uh, it, it's irrelevant. And I'll just buy a kit, and we'll. I mean, well, I've got the tool already. I just need to buy a few, uh, a few more riv nuts. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's where we're going to go. So I've changed my drill a bit, and what we'll do is we'll start with the ones for the rector regulator rectifier, these two. And all we need to do is drill them out. Like so, starting 
small and then basically working our way up so what i need to do now is uh change the drill bit for one that's a little bit bigger i think that one might be a bit too big yeah far too big so i'll go get me uh in fact i haven't got one to hand right now so i'll go get the drill bits um and uh we'll we'll, we'll open it up till such time as the head comes off the uh, off the rivner Okay, I've switched up to a 10 mil bit, and what I'm intending to do is just drill this outer ring off, and hopefully, once that ring's off, it'll drop out. Um, that's the plan, anyway. Um, and obviously, I don't want to drill too far, because I don't want to drill into the, into the frame itself. There we go. And there we are. There's the, there's the head of the rivnet. And as you can see, we've left the uh, the frame perfectly fine. And if I, there we go, tip her up, there is the rest of the rivnet. It's a bit hot, actually, obviously. Um, so yeah, that's what I've got to do now for the, the next nine. Um, exactly the same. And we'll be left with a nice clean hole, uh, ready to accept a brand new rivnet once the frame's been powder coated. Obviously, this is, it's not necessary to remove these for powder coat. You could powder coat straight over the top of them, really, but you have to bung them and stuff like that. But I think this is gonna give a far better finish when it comes to reassembling the bike. When it's brand new, brand new rivet nuts in there, you know, it, it's just those, those are the kind of details that are gonna make or break a, a, a resto like this, I believe. Anyway, what I'll do, I'll crack on with the rest, uh, get all of them out, and then I'll bring it back in and then we'll have a look at the head bearings. Okay, there is all the, rivet, all the rivet nuts removed. And as you can see, we've left ourselves with some nice clean holes without any damage. So they're, you know, when, when we come up with new ones, they'll be, uh, they'll be perfectly fine. Even got these ones out. In the, in the end, uh, inside where the head bearings go, the open, um, the headstock, you can actually stick your finger inside this part of the frame. So the, uh, the, the bottom part of the rivet nut just dropped. Um, I tipped the frame upside down and it just dropped out onto the floor. The only issue I had was these two here. I expected the ends of this piece of tube to be open into this piece of frame and that I would then just be able to give them a shake and then they'd drop out. Turns out it's not. The ends of this tube are actually, um, where these welds are, are actually completely closed. So the two ends um, of the rivet nut are actually inside there. And if you, if I shake it, you can hear them. I can live with it. You're never going to hear them. Um, it, it's, I would have preferred them to have come out, but I'm not going to lose sleep about it. Um, so yeah, they're, they're both inside there, but oh well, never mind. Right, um, what we need to do now is move on to these head bearings. So um, if we have a look at the bearings themselves, or the races, should I say, we have a look here. You can see just there, there's a neat, little slot that Kawasaki have left us in order to be able to get a, uh, a punch or a drift onto the back of it from the other side so I could literally drop that punch in there and whack the hell out of it with a hammer on both sides because this slot is there for both um, and, and then we should be able to just punch them out so what I'll do I'll maneuver the frame into a position to make that my life easier and then uh, we'll start we'll start getting them out Right, I've kind of got the, the frame in a, in a kind of comfortable position to be able to do this. I'm probably gonna to have to use a pry bar because if I put the, uh, the, the punch down, it's quite difficult. I mean, that one's okay. I can get in there with that one probably, but it's a little bit too fat. But if I put these ones down there, they're inside and um, I can't hold it and hit it with a hammer. So I'm gonna give it a go with this and see how we, uh, how we get on. could even apply a bit of heat to this if we need to. See how we get on like this first. Yeah, she's moving. I can feel, I can feel that there's a lip sitting proud. Yeah, there we go. Look, you can see it's coming out.
and there we are. There is the first one. So what I need to do now is turn her over, get her into a good position and do the same thing with the other side. Yep, and I can feel it coming. And there we are. There's the other one. So now, down in there, we're all good. All the races are removed. Everything's removed from this frame. This frame is literally now ready to go um, and be uh, shot blasted. So the plan is this. I'm going to take the frame down to the powder coaters. I've spoken to them already and they've uh, been in touch with me uh, and said that they're willing to do it. Um, but what they want to do, they said they've got a, I think it's called a RAB chart, I think it's called, R-A-B. Um, I might have got that wrong. If, if I have, I'll, I'll put it where it actually is at the bottom. Uh, it's a rab chart and uh, it's like a colour chart basically and they reckon that they can match most things but if I want this colour to be as close to the factory original as possible then I need to take it down as it currently is and they can basically do me a, a best colour match prior to, uh, prior to stripping it so what I need to do throw this frame in the car take it over there they're going to check the colour against the chart and basically tell me what they can do. I believe that this silver is called champagne silver. Now, I may be way off on that, I don't know. Um, but uh, that's, what I, that's what I'm led to believe it is. Um, and uh, yeah, so they'll, they'll match it, then strip the gold paint off with, um, with a media blaster, and then, and then uh, powder coat it. So yeah, that is the next stage with this frame. So the next time we see this, it should be, should be completely powder coated, looking factory fresh. So I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, um, although I did say to them that I want to fix these repairs first, I want to do that myself. So I'm going to take it down there, they're going to media blast it. I will then get it back from them, fix these little bits of damage here, then give it back to them for the powder coat. Um, so yeah, so yeah, next time, uh, next time you see the frame, um, it should be all powder coated. I won't bother filming this little bit because it's just a little tiny bit of um, metal filler. Uh, and a bit of sanding, and it's pretty boring. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't watch a video about that, so I won't subject you guys to it. So yeah, next time I see it, we should be all good. Right, what I want to do next, I think, is strip the forks apart, because the lowers, again, are going to be powder coated. Um, so yeah, I think that's probably a good place to start. Let's get them done. Right, I was getting a little bit ahead of myself. I completely forgot about the swing arm. So before we do the forks, we'll do the swing arm um, because there's a lot of bearings and things in here that need to come out. Uh, things like the uh, chain adjusters and all that good stuff. Um, pull that out. That's the, uh, the center sleeve. There, in here, there's a couple of roller bearings. On the outside, there's an oil seal. Um, so the seal needs to come off. Uh, there we go. There's one. And there's two. As you can see behind here, I've got the press. So we're gonna use the press to push them out. But we'll do that in a moment. Uh, right here is a spacer. And on this side, we've also got a spacer. And this one's a square one. The, uh, there's, there's actually like a protrusion on the inside of the frame that this sits on uh, when it's installed in the bike. Um, but that's obviously something that we'll deal with later on. Again, there's a seal. And in there, there's a circlip. So we need to pop the circlip off and then we can get that bearing out. Likewise on this side, there's a seal. This side's a lot, a lot dirtier because obviously this side has the, um, has the run of the chain. So what I might have to do is just chisel that out actually because it's a bit, it's a bit bogging in there. Yeah, well, I'll, do, I'll, grab, I'll get that out in a minute. I'll chisel it out. We need to take the chain guard off at the um, chain guard. Is it chain guard? Yeah, chain guard. We need to take that off 
Um, right, so what I'll do, I'll whip things like the, uh, the chain adjusters off, I'll get that seal out, and then uh, I'll whip that off, it's only held on with one screw, uh, yeah, just the one screw, things like that that need to come off as well. And then uh, we'll look at pushing the, uh, pushing the bearings out. One thing to note on here, it's quite badly scuffed on here, but again, that can all be repaired. And there's actually a dink just there. Um, I'm guessing at some point in its life, it's been down and that's probably the back of a footrest hanger. So it's probably dinked into it. But again, just like the uh, dent on the frame, that'll be fairly, fairly straightforward fix. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll get all those bits off that I just mentioned and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at getting the bearings out. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, all the seals and stuff, the uh, little chain guards come off. As you can see there, there's another riv nut. So I'll drill that one out just like I did on the, uh, on the frame. I'll do that later. You don't even see me do that one um, again. And then that'll leave uh, a night, you know, it won't be covered up with powder coat and stuff like that. And then I can fit a fresh one um, afterwards. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to remove the circ clip in here. With my circ clip pliers. screwdriver will probably come in handy as well. It's quite a tight fit in there. There we go, a little wiggle around. And it came out. Obviously, as you can see, I'm putting all the uh, swing arm related stuff into the one of the tubs. So I think what I'm going to do with this one is um, maybe use a set of bearing pullers on it to get that one out and then we'll see where we are with the rest um, afterwards um, because we may well need to press that one out from that side um, but again it's one of them things I probably won't realize until I try um, but obviously that bearing's going to be a nice tight fit in there and again with this one the roller bearings in the suspension linkage. They'll just get pressed out with this bad boy. Oh, here we go. Right, so I think I'm gonna need this right down to its lower setting. And then yeah, we can get in there. We can get in there fine actually. May need to may need to protect the swing arm from this though, but um, yeah, we'll um, we'll get in there fine. As you can see, we can uh, we've got plenty of room to work with in there. Uh, and obviously, what I need to do is make sure that this is kept straight so that it pushes them straight out and it doesn't try and twist on me. So I'll have a, I'll have a bit of a play around, and we'll get to a point where I can just push those out. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive that one all the way through till it meets the other one, and then drive them both out. Uh, in a one that that'll be the, uh, the, the, the easiest way. Right, what I want to do is I need to try and keep the, um, the swing arm as central to, to this as I can. Um, what I've done is I've put one of my welding gauntlets underneath it just to protect this um, from this and I've got the two steel blocks and I reckon that's going to be decent enough to sit under there and stay where it needs to be and hopefully that'll well, that'll work so what i need to do is just try basically and see how we'll get on um, we won't know until we give it a go right here we go all right Be, and I reckon that's about it. So let's go for it and see how we get on. All right, now we're twisting slightly. There we go. Right, that's the first bearing, and that's now being pushed all the way through to the other one. I think we've met the other one now because it's gone tight. 
And there we go. Whoops. As you can see, this side, the side of me uh, press is just rubbing against the side of the swing arm and taking the paint off, but I'm not overly concerned about it. It's gone quite loose. I think we're at the limits of the reach now. Let's take her up and see how we got on. Right. One of them's in there and the other one's there. So, what we need to do is I need to find something that I can drop down the inside. That's, oh, there we go, like a little socket. And basically, repeat the process. Repeat that process to get that last bearing out. And that's how I like it dropped out. And there we are. So as you can see now, the bore's nice and clean. We've uh, we've not damaged it. There's no real damage. There's a tiny mark there, but I'm not going to lose sleep about it. And like I said, it's got a bit of powder coat anyway. Um, but yeah, you can see straight through there, and it's all nice and good. Right then, what we need to do next is the, the main bearings. I'm going to try, I'm not sure actually which, I've got a feeling it needs to be pushed that way. So what I'll do, I'll give it a go and see how we get on and it may push that out instead of having to use a puller on it. So if I take this back up all the way, something move well, because this isn't completely square it uh, right it did move you can see there you can see that the bearings been pushed down and that one has come out enough to cover up the slot for the circlip so it did move um, so I think what we need to do is basically put something under here that's gonna be big enough to go around there and not impede the bearing and then yeah we should be uh, should be golden um, if I get it started like that I think we'll be uh, I think we'll be on a winner uh, again using the socket so if I take this back up literally just fits. So let's have another go. Right. Oh, that's got incredibly tight. Hmm. 
could be, and I'm going the wrong direction. I haven't looked in the manual, which is not advisable, I probably should. I think what I might try and do is just drive out the centre the centre sleeve. And see how that goes. What's happening now is that bearing has bottomed out. So what I can do now Yeah, there we are. So that's the way to go. Um, so what I need, I need to find some a big a big enough socket to go around the outside of that and then basically repeat that and eventually that'll drop out. So I'll go and find the socket, that'll fit, and then we'll uh, we'll get this bad boy pushed out. Right, what I'm doing is I'm positioning these blocks either side of it to basically capture it as it comes down because um, I couldn't find a socket that was the right size for the diameter of, the, of this so I'm kind of trying to improvise and hopefully it'll, hopefully it'll work but we'll find out in a second obviously I'm mindful of the fact that this swing arm is only made of aluminium and I don't want to I don't want to damage it so a bit of a little bit of trial and error, but we'll get there. Right, where are we here? Okay, let's try that. Yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, there we are. I can see the bearing coming out of the bottom block. That is the first of the bearings out. It's a little bit notchy, but it has just been pressed out, so that's probably not going to help. All right, now the centre sleeve should come out next. There it is. have some needle rollers now these are um, probably gonna again pretty much like I did on this I'm just gonna have to press one down until it meets the other one and then they're both out so well they are crack on because you saw me do the same thing on that side I'll press one out push all the way down get them both out and then I'll bring it back and we'll have a look at what we've uh, what we've got okay I've got the, uh, the, two, the main roller bearings out, there's three of them. There's two that sit kind of like that together on this side. And then there's one on the other side behind this bearing. Now, when I was trying to pull this one out, um, it basically shattered. Um, as I was pulling it, it shattered and I heard it crack and all the little rollers fell out. And basically what I ended up having to do is I had to get a really sharp chisel down the inside of the outer race of the bearing. And as you can see, I just cut down it and then I was able to collapse it and pull it out. Um, there's a tiny little scuff on the inside, but nothing that won't dress up um, with a little file, or a little bit of emery paper or something like that. So I'll sort that out later. It's, it's, it's marginal. You probably won't even be able to see it. You can just about make it out just there. There's a little, just a little nick. I'm not sure if it's showing on the camera or not. Um, yeah, I did that. Unfortunately, it, it was, it was going to happen. It was unavoidable. But yeah, it, it just absolutely shattered. I've no, no idea why, but yeah. Anyway, they're all out. 
Uh, there's the spacer from the centre. Um, so yeah, they'll all be getting replaced. Uh, all I need to do now is um, obviously just drill out the uh, the Rivna, take this horrible carbon fibre sticky stuff off, and then this is ready to go to be blasted and then powder coated along with the frame. Anyway, as I said before, let's uh, let's get on with the forks and then uh, we can wrap this episode up. Okie dokie, so here's the forks. <coughs> They've um, obviously had a fairly hard life, as you can see on the inside of this one. All the paint that's been on there is completely come off. That one's not much better. Um, they are leaking terribly from the uh, lower bolt, the one that holds the damper rod into the bottom of the fork leg, hence the reason for the towel. Uh, but yeah, behind that bolt <coughs> down here, there uh, there should be a sealing washer, uh, and it's leaking. It's not um, it's not sealing anyway. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, a factor um, it was it was leaving a little pool of oil um, the stanchions themselves there's quite a lot of pitting all over them uh, and I think they've I think they're for the scrapper if I'm being honest I don't think there's any point in trying to do anything with these I'll just replace them with new ones they're not particularly expensive um, and they're available everywhere these uh, these fork stanchions uh, the seals themselves aren't even the same they're actually completely different um, I mean that's obviously just the dust seals but um, they've been replaced at some point but not as a pair um, so lord knows why um, yeah so the plan with these strip them completely apart and the lowers I'll get off to the coaters um, I have seen in the past like a gunmetal grey colour used on the lowers on the ZX9R and the ZX6R um, from the factory because um, a buddy of mine had uh, is it a G1 model I think it is um, ZX6R the one that looks the same shape as this 9R and his had the gunmetal grey and I always thought they looked really cool um, compared to what I had at the time which was a CBR 600 uh, and they were just plain silver and I just thought his looked um, pretty pretty dapper so I think I'll probably go with that um, to be perfectly honest um, so yeah what we need to do first is strip them down so what I'll do I'll do one um, for your delectation uh, and then the other one I'll do um, in my own time um, and we'll have them apart so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use me impact gun on the lower bolt um, what size that one is 10 mil if I had to guess yeah 10 mil so using uh, using the impact gun on these is, is a good idea because um, if you try and do it with a, with a ratchet or something like that all that will happen is the damper inside will just spin uh, and obviously try and get it out whilst the fork's still assembled uh, makes life a darn sight easier There we go. That's that. So what we need to do now is um, start the rest of the strip down. We'll start that at the top. And what I'll do, I will definitely start leaking oil now, um, as you can see, because I've taken the bolt partly out. Um, it's going to start weeping oil. So yeah, um, what we'll do, I'll get the tools out and we'll start tearing tearing it down. Right, well I've got, I've got the bottom of the fork inside this little tub and then any of the oil that leaks out at the bottom uh, is obviously going in there and all over my bench. Uh, right, first thing we're going to do, take the top nut off. They're obviously loosened because we did that before we took them out of the yolks um, because this makes this stage easy. Um, if we had tried to undo these now, all that would have happened is the whole stanchion would have turned and they're quite impossible to hold. Um, so, yeah, we made our life a lot easier by doing that that way. Keep going until it pops out. And it does pop up a little bit, but not to the point where it flings into the ceiling, like some people would have you to believe. There we go. And there we are. Right. So, what I've got here, I've got me, I've got me oil tub. And what I'm going to do is I am going to take this fork over here and I'm going to tip it there we are, all that lovely oil which is horrible and minging the bottom bolts actually just fell out I don't know if you heard it hit the floor that was the bottom bolt which I did earlier on it's actually just completely come out So 
So yeah, we'll empty all the oil out here and then it saves the bench getting me in. This is a particularly dirty job, unfortunately. It's one of those kind of things. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get some, some of my paper towel, I'm gonna stick it down prior to uh, starting to strip it. Right, uh, as I said a moment ago, the uh, the damper bolt actually fell out. Uh, it wasn't my intent to take it all the way out, but it, you know, it's not a it's not a showstopper. It just means that the damper rod's no longer held into the uh, into the lower fork, um, so it, it, it's free to move. Uh, but what we need to do in order to start stripping it down is we need to crack the lock nut on the uh, on the top bolt, and to do that, what we need to do is turn the uh, the center part, the blue part, let's get my tool the right way around, there we go, right, there we go, that was, didn't want too tight, and then we can now just spin it off, we should be able to just spin it off, that is that off the rod for the preload and then we can start now pulling the rest of the fork out obviously if you're pulling this apart and to do a fork cha uh, seal change and an oil change, just make sure you remember the order that it comes out. Um, obviously, mine are coming completely apart and they're going to be apart for quite some time. Here's the damper. And there we go. Right, there's probably a bit of oil left in there. There's a little bit, not too much. As you can see, the remainder of it's all come out all over the uh, paper. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have a bit of a clean up. Then what we're gonna do is we'll prise out the, uh, the dust seal. Then we can get the oil seal out. Uh, well, the, 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 the retainer for the oil seal will come out and then we'll pop the stanchion and the fork lower apart. All right then, so we've got all the internals out. They're all laid out down there. What we need to do now is separate the, the stanchion from the lower. And to do that, we need to prise up the dust seal, take that off, that scrap. And then inside here, which looks actually quite rusty, there's like a spring clip. Yeah, it's very rusty actually. And what that does is that engages in um, a slot around on the inside of the lower. What I've got to do, is I've got to find the end. There's the end, right. So. We'll go all the way around, prising it out. And as you can see, that's quite uh, quite nasty and gammy. Um, right, that is what held in the um, the oil seal. So now, what we need to do is we need to try and separate them. And to do that, what we need to do is basically bang these together. So I may drop a little bit of oil, but if I do, then it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is basically whack the underside of this stanchion against the underside of the seal and basically what it'll do is it'll drive the seal out. Um, it'll probably come out with the bush um, which th there's two bushes inside, one inside here and then one on the end of the stanchion and they'll basically bang together and pull the seal out. So this is basically what we need to do like this. There we go. As you can see it's a bit of, bit of spatter but that's what we were trying to achieve. And there's the bushes that I was talking about. There's the one on the stanchion, and that is the one out of the lower fork. And there is the oil seal. And that's pretty knackered. Um, anyway, I think it's coming in rust from the, uh, from the spring. There's the washer, and there's the bush, and there's the, uh, there's the other bush. And there's the split. You can actually just prise that apart and it'll come off. Um, if we there we go just like so 
and there is the stanchion. Now, as I said before, we can see here there's a lot of a lot of pitting in the chrome. You can get them re-chromed, but the cost of re-chroming is probably the same as a new pair of stanchions anyway. And here's the lower. And uh, yeah. That fits on the bottom of the damper. And as you can see, this is a very messy job. So there we are, that is the lower fork. Obviously these bolts need to come out. And uh, yeah, we can now get that stripped and powder coated in any color that I want. So yeah, that will be going off with the frame. So obviously I've got another fork to do, um, the other fork. But yeah, that is it. So thanks for uh, thanks for stopping guys, uh, stopping by. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you uh, you enjoyed this video. It was actually one very long one today, uh, pretty straightforward. But yeah, hopefully we'll see you all for the next one. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Uh, hop, pop over to the socials, links in the description, and I'll see you all over there. Thanks very much, guys. Bye bye now.